Welcome back guys. So today we're going to be talking about the GameCube from Nintendo, one of my all-time favorite systems. One of the last systems that I have, you know, quite a bit of nostalgia for, reason being, last system I remember sitting down and, you know, playing with friends, you know, locally. You know, everything is online now, but this is the last system that I have those fond memories of just kicking back, chilling with people, with friends, family, whatever, and just having a damn good time. Um, and if you're like me, I'm always looking for the best solution to getting the, 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 the best picture quality out of these old school systems. So I do like trying to find ways to be able to play my systems on HD TVs because that's pretty much all I got. You know, I dabble in CRT a little bit, but not a lot. I do like being able to record, being able to play on my TVs, all that kind of stuff. And well, there are some solutions for the GameCube to be able to get the best possible output. Now, one of them, which is what we're talking about today, is gonna to be the GCHD from Eon. So what is this? Essentially, this is an external adapter that is modless, just, you know, plug and play, that's it. No input lag. You could plug the, your, your HDMI in through this to your TV and you unlock progressive scan mode. So you can get 640 by 480p. Not every game supports that, but a lot of them do. And this is the best way, in my opinion, to get that because previously, this mode, being able to output the GameCube the best possible way you could, was locked behind a very pricey component cable from Nintendo. So if you recall years ago, Nintendo did put out a component cable for the GameCube. You can only get it through them. And at that time, it was like 30, 35 bucks. These were not sold in stores. You had to go direct. Now, yeah, you know, a good number of people got them. They're out there, but they've also increased in price drastically. I think it, you know, it's it's because a lot of people do love the GameCube and they want to be able to to have the best picture quality possible. But those damn cables, man! As of today, March 10th, when I'm recording this, Happy Mario Day, by the way. The lowest price I saw for a component cable was just slightly under 300 bucks. Um, and, and that was an auction, that wasn't a buy it now. So I'm just like, dang. But I was seeing between 300 to like $600. I think the ones that were like 600, they were actually over 600, they were brand new sealed. Um, so they're out there and they are very pricey. And I'm not saying that this little device here is not expensive because it is. This retails for $150. Um, and today I can actually save you a little bit of money off of this. So if you stay tuned and you're really interested in this, I'll get you set up on saving some money on this bad boy. But yeah, the component cable, that was your best option. If you want to use an original GameCube to get, you know, progressive scan to get that 640 by 480p. Now we did have other options besides this thing. You can get this same, you know, device essentially internally modded. Um, this is based off of open source software and publicly available components. But at the same time, this is not for those people who can do internal mods themselves. And even then, to find a GameCube already internally modded is pretty hard to find right now. And if you can find one, they are going to be going for quite a bit of money. So this, I think there's some benefits to it. I do have an internally modded GameCube here. And it's pretty cool, but if anything ever happened to this little fella, what am I gonna do? You know, I'm not that great with soldering and all that. Am I gonna, you know, desolder everything or pay somebody to remove the mod um, if I can't fix the GameCube to be able to put it in another system? I don't know. That's what I like about this. It's transferable, plug and play. You can use this on any compatible GameCube. So the one thing to note with this is that your GameCube, the one that we are gonna be using it on today, this little fella here, you do need to make sure you have the digital AV out. So regardless of what you hear, these systems are not rare. You can find these all day. The model number for this particular system that this adapter 
is compatible with is going to be DOL-001. So if you look that up on you know eBay, if you don't already have a system with that, you'll easily find them. I got this one, the silver one, I think around 40 bucks. You know, it was complete with power and a decent controller and all that. But I also did find another one, um, the same color as this system, but a little worse condition uh, with no cables or anything. And it works perfectly fine. Bought it for about 15 bucks. So they're out there, they're not rare. They were the first versions. Nintendo removed that digital port, you know, in later revisions. So you do have to, you know, kind of pay attention to that. Now, besides these options that I just spoke about, we do have one other one. A lot of people will be like, well, why don't you just play on the Wii? Well, yes, you can take a first version Wii that has the GameCube ports, memory card slot, all that good stuff, get the little uh, Wii to HDMI um, little adapter thing and be on your way. That is fine and great. But I think one of the big reasons that the GameCube has stuck around, even though there's a lot of great games for it, don't get me wrong, but a big thing has been Smash Brothers. So, you know, Smash Brothers is a competitive scene. People still love the GameCube version to this day. Now, if you play GameCube on the Wii using that little adapter, what that little adapter is doing is taking an analog signal and converting it to digital. You're getting some lag, you're getting some input lag, and there is color distortion. There's some issues with color and, and whatnot. The picture quality is not gonna be as crisp and nice and the proper colors that you will get out of an original GameCube using a mod like this or even not even using a mod or an adapter like this. It's just not the same. So a lot of people do prefer original hardware as far as the GameCube to play their games. So. Yes, you can play on the Wii, and the Wii is very cheap to find them, and the little adapter is hella cheap, not gonna lie. So, that's what we're looking at today. We're gonna go ahead and open this up, get up close and personal. I'll talk about where you can get this little discount you can get on it to get it cheaper than anywhere else, and then kind of test it out and see what the games look like on this. What options do we have? Because there are some customization settings with this as well that I think are pretty neat. So let's go ahead, dive up close, take a close look at this device, plug it in, and then peep it out. So let's do it. Okay guys, so here it is. Nice little box, GCHD Eon. Looks like a little GameCube, pretty cool stuff. Goes over some stuff on the back, just pretty much telling you, play any GameCube game on any HD TV. Eliminates, you know, virtually eliminates all input lag, compatible with any HDMI enabled dis display. Outputs the highest possible native resolution. No additional modding required. Plug and play, easy. And it just tells you you just plug the bad boy in and you're ready to go. So let's open her up and see what she looks like. So this is the little device here. And there have been other ones available. Um, like I said, it's all open source, uh, you know, software and parts that you can find out there. The diagrams, you know, are easily found if you want to make one yourself. Um, you're going to spend time and money doing so. So what Eon has done here is, you know, professionally put one together for us. Mold injected, you know, shell. This is not 3D printed or anything. Does have a little button for a universal remote to sync up, you know, universal remote. So I am, you know, I do have this specific remote synced to this to access my settings. But the one thing I do want to say is, is if you don't want to sync up a universal remote to this, you don't have to. It's plug and play. It's just going to work right out the box. What you can get out of doing that is, you know, scan lines, line doubler. There's a few little options. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, so the other thing I want to note with this is that earlier versions, if you've seen other reviewers messing with this, a lot of them had a difficult time plugging it into the system. Uh, you know, you, you really had to push. So these newer versions that you will get if you order them now are very easy to put in. So let's go ahead and take a look. Now I'm just going to do it one handed. You just line it up. Um, the analog port, this is just a dummy port just for stability. Then your digital, you know, port goes there. So you just line it up. Push it in and that's it. It's in there, nice and snug. Don't really have to worry about anything. Don't have to really mm, 
pop that bad boy in um, and it's 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 in there it's not going anywhere so that's a definite improvement um, though it's still snug like I said it's not loose or anything it's not going to easily slide out and you're ready to go so you plug in your HDMI on the side power the system up and you're ready to go pretty good stuff so we are going to test out a couple games today just to see you know the quality we get behind it so we will be taking a look at wave race blue storm and then on the game boy advance player or game boy player we will be taking a look at final fantasy 6 sound restoration version i thought it would be interesting just to see this uh it is a repro version of final fantasy 6 but it has the color and sound restored to this the original version it's kind of messed up so It'd be kind of cool to see what this looks like on the GCHD through the GameCube. So let's go ahead and plug this bad boy in and get this party started. Okay guys, so we've got everything plugged in, ready to go. Wave race in there. And as you see right now, we are actually in 480i mode. So everything is going to be a, have a little touch of blur to it, I think. Um, it doesn't look the greatest, but a lot of these games will ask you to enable progressive scan. Either it automatically asks you or you have to hold the B button down. For this game, for me, I just boot it up and it asks, and as you see, the little pop-up up there did say 480p. Now everything is looking quite a bit sharper and crisp, in my opinion. Not really in my opinion, it's just, it is what it is, it's fact. Um, so the one thing you do have to keep in mind with this device is that it is not some magical thing th that is gonna upscale. Essentially, this is just giving you the best possible resolution that the system supports going through to your HD TV. And like I said earlier, that was previously locked up by those expensive ass component cables. Uh, so as long as you keep your expectations in check and realize that, hey, I'm not getting 1080 out of this. I'm, I'm getting what resolution the system can output on my HD TV. You should be happy with, with what this thing can do. Um, like I said, I've I've had experience with this because my other system does have the same device internally modded. Um, and I can't go back. I just love playing these games in progressive scan mode. It, it just, it looks really great, you know. This is not a system that is crazy old. Uh, you know, it's got a little bit of years on it. It's getting up there. Uh, but, you know, a lot of these games do already look good. And I think going this route just it brings it out. If you plug this in through AV on HD TV, it's just it's not very pretty. Um, you know, it's kind of a blurry mess to me. Still playable. Some people don't mind, but a lot of people they do want to ensure that you know what the system supports, they're able to get out of their TV. And this is one of the only ways to do it. Uh, like I said in a kind of reasonable price for some people 150 bucks is going to be hard to swallow regardless you, you know i'm not arguing with that don't sit there and think i'm saying hey buy this buy this buy this 150 dollars well spent that's really going to be up to you and your setup if you want your visuals looking cleaner and and, and crisper on an hd tv then this is a definite option um so like I said earlier, I do have a universal remote attached, synced up to this. So what we can do, and I do want to note first, I do have a lot of devices around here. So I think I get some interference with this. So I kind of, I mean, my GameCube's only right in front of me, so it's not a huge deal. But if I'm in front it's and I press the buttons, it doesn't really register. I got to kind of aim it to the back of the GameCube. But once I'm there, I'm good. I've heard other people have issues, but it's it's more so, I think, if you have a lot of stuff going on to where there can be interference with the, the infrared sensor. Um, you know, so just keep that in mind. For me, it's not a big issue, but if you have this in like a little entertainment center and you have a lot of stuff around, possible you can get some interference and that could be annoying. For me, I'm being honest, it was a waste of money for me to get a, a universal remote because I don't use a dang thing in these settings at all <laughs> but if you want to use them this is the way to go get a universal remote so if you are in 480p you are limited to what you can do um, if you're in 480i you can do line doubler you know that's the only extra option essentially but if you're in 480p line doubler 
doesn't you know you can't mess with it because you're already good but you can turn scan lines on um, you have some options there scan line strength you can go up or down you know boost it up uh, you can go odd or even and to me it looks horrible with the scan lines for me this is pointless I, i've never used it i looked at it and was like nope just plain and simple nope no scan lines for me i mean some games look good with scan lines i'm not gonna lie but as far as a system that's not that old uh i don't think a lot of the games i want to play look that great with scan lines on this but just wanted to point that that's my personal opinion some people might think differently you could get a sweet spot with scan lines i mean on my neo geo i use scan lines and i have my very specific sweet spot that makes the graphics look better but on the gamecube for me it messes up the visuals that's just you know for me anyway so the other options you have you can change like the color of the the little menu box you know whatever no big deal other settings you can turn you allow 480p mode on or off so you can force it to stay in 480i uh you know you have your rgb limited range um that could you know be useful depending upon your tv um Enhanced DVI mode display is 16 by 9 mode switch delay volume and mute so you have a handful of settings I've not really utilized much on here the way I have it set is the way I've always used um, The HD on the GameCube for as long as I've had a system with it So there it is if you mute it, it just turns off the game audio Whatever I mean I don't know why that would be useful, but I guess it would for some people. You can view all modes. Just look at different resolutions and whatnot. Um, so, for example, you can go in there and change, like, you know, scan lines and, and whatnot. What you want pretty much the default settings to be for w whatever, you know, the system is at. Uh, so, the other thing, you can store your settings, save them, so that way, whatever you get your sweet spot at for your GameCube and your display, you can save them every time you boot this up, you're going to be good. And then your About is going to give you some information, GC Video DVI version 2.3. Uh, from my understanding, this version is a little older now. There has been an updated uh, firmware for this. I'm not 100% if you can update the firmware on this device or not, or what the benefits would be. Uh, for me, I have no issue keeping it the way it is. My other mod, my modded system is on the same firmware. And if you were to update the firmware on this, I'm pretty sure you would have to dismantle the case to get to the, to the actual board to do it. Um, so you just got some information on, on who is responsible for you know GC video. Pretty good stuff. Let's go back and then you can exit and that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and switch over to a Game Boy Advance game and see how that looks before we go okay guys here we go Game Boy player time with Final Fantasy 6 sound restoration so typically when you first boot up your Game Boy player it will ask you if you want to go into progressive scan mode we're already in it we are good so since we're not doing a let's play, I'm just going to kind of let this play out in the back so you can kind of see and hear, you know, what we're getting out of this device. Um, so obviously there's going to be pros and cons with this thing. My channel is about honesty, and that's what we got to be. We got to be honest with this thing. Pros, we'll talk about pros first. And really, to me, the biggest pro is that you're getting these resolutions that normally you would have to spend an outrageous amount of money to get those component cables. That's the biggest pro, is that this gives you that and it's easily accessible. Plug and play, you can use this on your HD TV. Awesome stuff. And pretty much, that's what this device is about and that's what the biggest pro is, is what the device is about, right? No issues as far as build quality, anything like that. I think the device looks pretty nice. You don't really see it anyway, um, even if you don't like the aesthetic of it. It's, it's in the back. Um, that could also be a con to some people like hey this thing's kind of you know taking up space in the back but it does not extend past the handlebar so i don't think that's a huge issue and like i said you don't really see it so whatever now on to cons and there are a couple in my eyes price is going to be the biggest one 150 bucks that's a lot of money not everybody could afford that not everybody can justify spending that kind of money 
We have other options out there like we spoke about earlier. If $150 is not a big deal for you to get the best possible visuals out of your GameCube, then this is an excellent device. If you want to keep it budget friendly, definitely go in the route of the Wii and getting a little HDMI adapter, playing your GameCube through that if you have a Wii with the GameCube ports on it. That's great. There's pros and cons to that as well, like we kind of mentioned earlier. Some people don't really care, but that's great. To me, the biggest con going that route is, is the Game Boy Advance stuff. For me, the biggest thing is playing Game Boy Advance games. That's why I love the GameCube, because I can play my Game Boy, Game Boy Advance games on it. That That's a big selling point for me. Some people might not care, so then the Wii is going to be a very viable option, because it's very cheap. You can get a Wii with a GameCube ports on it for very cheap the little adapter is cheap as heck so why not i mean the pros outweigh the cons going that way some people prefer using the gamecube and the gamecube only and that's what this device is geared towards people who want to get the best out of their gamecube but that 150 dollars is very expensive comparing it to the component cables it's half of the price of the cheapest ones you could find I don't see those component cables going down in price because they're just getting rarer and rarer and rarer. So it is what it is. Um, the, there's the one other con that I do want to point out, and it might not even be a big deal. It's not even a, that much of a con for me because my GameCube, when I'm playing it, it's typically right in front of me. But when you sync up a universal remote, it could be just my setup because I have so much around that I get interference, but I'll just show you. So I have it mapped to the OK button to open up the menu. So I'm two feet away from the GameCube, not even lying, two feet away, pressing it, nothing. Moving in closer and closer and closer, nothing, 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 nothing. Touching the GameCube right on the front by controller port four, nothing. Move it up to the top, nothing, nothing, nothing. Finally, I'm to the back of the system, right over top, the menu comes up. So, I don't know, you know, if you have this in an entertainment center with a bunch of other stuff around it, if you'll get that kind of interference. But I do want to point that out because that is a con that you could possibly come across. For me, it's not an issue. And the reason why it's not an issue is because I don't access this menu. I don't use anything in this menu. So it's not a big deal. If you have the internal modded version of this... Um, like I do, my system, I have it wired to that the controller um, to, to use the controller to access this menu. Um, but that's a very specific additional part of the mod that has to be done. Um, and it, it's pretty easy, but even me using that for months, I don't access this menu at all. Um, but it's there. Some people might want to mess around with it and get certain things tweaked. And that could be a pain in the ass, trying to get this to... To register if you're in your living room and you're sitting back and you're like i mean imagine you're trying to change your t channel on your tv and it won't change because there's something else over there causing interference so i think that's fair to point out that that could be an issue it is an issue for me i don't think it's this specific remote um, because i've tried a couple others and it's the same thing but like i said for me it's not a deal breaker in that I don't use this. I don't I don't I don't use these menus cuz the main reason you'd want to access it is for scan lines and I don't like scan lines on the GameCube. But needed to be pointed out. So like I said earlier, you know, we'll just we're going to finish it here. I think I've shown enough, talked a lot about this. You can get a discount on this. So Castlemania Games did approach me on this, gave me the opportunity to check this out and share it with you guys. And I do love Castlemania Games, and I've ordered a lot of stuff from him. I would not be promoting them if I didn't like what he does. Uh, it takes care of his customers, offers a lot of cool stuff. So really appreciate him. I've spent a lot of money through him. Um, so he did tell me, hey, we still got you know a little handful of these available, and if your viewers want to get them for the cheapest price, price possible, I haven't even seen them cheaper than 150 bucks. You guys can use my promo code Pixel10 on checkout through CastlemaniaGames.com. Get you 15 bucks off. Not a lot of money, but still, that's cheaper than buying this anywhere else. Free shipping, and depending upon where you are, you probably won't pay tax either. So you are saving a little bit of money if you are interested in this. 
just got to share that with you guys. Link will be in the description if you want to peep that out. Appreciate you guys stopping in, peeping this out. Just wanted to share this with you guys. I think it's an interesting device that does have its pros and cons. So you just have to weigh that for yourself. What's the best option for you? It's always great to share options with you guys. I can't say, hey, do this and that's wrong. But everything has its pros and cons. You have to look at what is more valuable to you. And I hope you take this video and, you know, it kind of gave you some kind of information. So thank you guys. Smash that like button, subscribe, do all that wonderful stuff. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. Boom.